Who wrote your letter of recommendation for the summer? <laughs> I dropped my How many problems are assigned for homework? How many problems are assigned? Okay, I'm just going to start you on these problems. I'm not necessarily going to finish them because, come on. You guys are BC, you're the top C in school. Yes, you are. Yeah. Independent study. Independent study. Laugh at them. Yoshida. <laughs> Yoshida in two years? In one year? What do you mean? Next semester. Yeah. 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 You don't take multi variable. Multi variable is going to say 5 points. 5.4. Okay, here we go. I guess it's going to show you. Number 6. Where's that chalk? I just opened a new one for the last class. Where'd you go? Uh -oh. I stole it. Swiper swiped it. Over here. No, they're not. You never wear the baby pants. Yeah, this is the fourth time I've worn this year. Number six. Come on! I think we'll be, you could see something like this on the test or on the practice test. So we have a parabola. Come on, we did this in pre-cal last year, man. In fact, I remember it, we remembered the PCH test. This was number one in the PCH test. Oh, yeah, I remember. Guess what? I got number one. Okay, here's a point P, X, Y. Is this the rectangle one? Yeah, the rectangle. So Y equals 12 minus X squared. What is the largest area the rectangle has? Now, I remember on the PCH test last year, I gave you this problem, and I said, Find the coordinates of point P that will give you the largest area. You guys don't remember that problem? That was number one on the test. I don't know. Okay, anyway, look at this picture. We want to maximize the area, so we need to write a function for the area. Well, look at this picture. 2xy. Does everybody see that? Because when you label the point x, y, this is x and this is y. The base is 2x and the height is y. Except we have to get rid of one of these variables. We need another equation. Substitution. It's given to you. So you plug it in. You get 2x plus 12 minus x squared. Substitution. Take the derivative and make the number line, and you're done. Do I need to do that? Yes. OK, shall, shall I multiply it out then, or you want to do product rule? Product I'd rather multiply it out. 24x minus 2x cubed. Take the derivative, 24 minus 6x squared. Factor out a 6, 4 minus x squared. Number line time. Don't forget the label now. On the test, it's going to say your answer must include a derivative and a number line, unless you're using the second derivative test. But I think making the number line is much easier. Negative 2 and 2, minus plus, minus. Now, actually, we don't care about here. Why? Yeah, because x is a point somewhere in the first quadrant here, right? x cannot be negative. So a is increasing, a is decreasing. So we say that x max is equal to 2. That means if you want maximum area for this rectangle, the x coordinate of that point is 2. And then you need to answer that question. Wait, do we need a number line with this? He just what's no, but this one you don't on the homework. Yeah, if I check these problems, you don't have a number line. I take off the whole thing. This one you don't. You just factor it. Oh, he's recording. Yeah, but you need a number line to determine whether this number is a max, a min, or neither. How do you know this? How do you know this number here gives you a maximum? How do you know it's not giving you a minimum or it's neither? You have to make a number line or use the second derivative test, Yoshida. You just be like it's smaller and then it No, you have to have mathematical proof. This is it. This is called the first derivative test that you guys probably forgot already. That's the last chapter. Number seven. Pretty much I'm doing the whole problem. H. I'm trying to read. You have an 8 by 15 inch piece of cardboard and you're cutting. We have this at PCH! You have the same problem. You cut squares from each of the corners, and then you fold up the sides. So what happens if you cut these out, and you fold up the flaps? So you get a rectangular box. Yeah, that looks like this. Oh, that's why. So what happens when you fold up the flaps? Isn't that x? 
And then this, what is this? Eight minus 2x. Isn't that what this is right here? Yeah. And then what is this? 15 minus 2x. Isn't that what that is? Yes. Come on, this is so simple. So therefore, looking at that picture, what is the volume of the box? Height times length times width. Take the derivative and make a number line. Can you guys, can I trust you to do that? Yes, I do. You want to multiply it out? I'm just, you want yes. me to do it? Yeah. No. Yeah. No, we can do it. Yeah, we can do it. Let's go for the movie. Yeah. Next problem. I can tell you, there's no way we're going to get there. There's no way. <coughs> but we can try. Okay, now there's only one variable, so it's easy. Next problem is number 10. What is number 10? Well, it's like a whole homework. <laughs> this is like the example that I gave you guys on the board. Okay, you have a pea patch. P E A. <laughs> For those of you who haven't read, it's a pea patch. What, what, what you guys are thinking? Like a doggy pea patch. Yeah, I know. I think of the letter P. <laughs> and it's divided into two equal parts by another fence parallel to one of the sides. What dimensions for the outer rectangle will require the smallest total length of fence? Okay, shall we call this X and call this Y? Yes. So the length of fence that you're going to use, look, look at this picture. What is the length of fence that you're going to use? 3X, 2Y. 3X plus 2Y. 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 But the problem is, you got two variables. We need to get rid of one of the variables. We need another <coughs> equation. Do they give us more information? Yes. The area of the P patch has to be 216 square, whatever it is. Solve for Y, 216 over X. Plug it in there. So 3X plus 2Y, that's 432 over X. Take the derivative and make the number line. Now, I will do this one because I bet some of you are not doing it correctly. F prime is equal to 3. What is the derivative of 432 over x? Ishihara? No. See, now you guys are the targets because I'm facing this way most of the time. You guys no. get most of the questions. <coughs> Ishihara? Uh, x. Just read it off your paper. Um, x times 432. <coughs> no. Times no, times 0. zero. Is x to the negative. That's like x to the negative 1. I told you guys to memorize. Okay, for those of you who haven't memorized this yet, I just laugh at you already. The square root of x derivative is 1 over 2 root x. The derivative of 1 over x is negative 1 over x squared. These come up so often, you just know already. Okay, Nishihara, negative. Since I just told you. Are you doing the product rule? Oh my god. Why? That's a, that's a constant. Throw the constant on the side like an unwanted pet. And the derivative of 1 over x is? There you go. Oh, very good, Ishihara. We can, even A, B can do that. Yes, they can. Make a least common, now whenever you have fractions, you need to make a least common denominator. 3x squared minus 432, factor out the 3, x squared minus 144, all over x squared. Now you make a number line. 12. Now remember, I'm warning you, we're not going to have a quiz, so if all the points are going to, you guys are not going to have a chance to redeem yourself. You just have to do it right on the first time. Your number line must be labeled. If you don't label the number line, that's automatically <coughs> right there. Then this will be how many problems? What goes on the number line? What, what makes the top zero? 12. 12. Plus or minus 12. What makes the bottom zero? Zero. zero. These are the numbers you should have on your number line. Now you test them. What do you get, Babachani, starting from the right? Plus. Minus. Minus. Plus. Very good. But we really don't care about these, yeah? Why? Because x is a length, right? It cannot be negative. So f is decreasing here, f is increasing there. So now we know x min is equal to 12. So if you want to minimize the amount of fence that you're going to use, you make x 12. And then you answer the question. I don't know what the question is. You guys are going to. You guys are going to. Wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> no, yeah, the video. Oh, the video is too. Thank you. 
Next, number 10, number 11a. Somebody said this, these are like almost all the problems. You guys should be ashamed of yourselves. How many people came in for help this morning? One. Okay. Did you guys even read these problems? You know what? Maybe we, should, we need a homework chair. You know what? Because I, since I teach six classes, I really don't have time to like look at the homework. Maybe I should check in on a daily basis. Like I say, everybody pick up problem 11 and I'll just grade you on that one problem. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. You don't, you don't have to cover yourself. <laughs> I mean, you do look in the dress code thing, right? But not oh. for this thing. Ah, uh, that was a uh, uh, Cover yourself. Okay, now, when we get to the test, I'm probably going to give you a diagram for the pictures because some of you don't read. Yeah? It says you have a square faced, rec open top, rectangular steel tank. Uh, and then you're going to weld the things together. As the project engineer, your job is to find the dimensions for the base and the height that will make the tank weigh as little as possible. So what are we trying to minimize here? The weight, which, which? Mass. MG. <laughs> so basically, we're trying to minimize the surface area, right? OK, so which is the same as the weight, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, so the surface area of this box is Hirano. Hirano. Look at this picture. What's the surface area of the box? There's only one Hirano. Three X Y. Why are you listening to uh, Just look at the picture. This is simple oh, geometry. Hirano. <laughs> Wait, a There's a square on the bottom. What's, oh. the, what's the area of a square? X squared. And there's four plus rectangles four around X the side. Plus <laughs> four <laughs> X Y. Who said three X Y? How is there three? <laughs> now, here's the question. How come it's not two X squared? Don't you have a square on the bottom and the top? No, so, no it top. says open top. But only some of you are just reading the problem for the first time now. So the people that are looking books. down. Not everybody's looking up. <laughs> now we need another sure. equation. Do they give us a little, some more information? Yes. The volume is 500 <coughs> cubic feet. So what is the volume of this box? X squared Y equal 500. Solve for, Solve y. for y. 500 over X squared. Yes. Take that, plug it in there. Find the take the derivative, make a number line. And then you're going to have to make a least common denominator. Mm -hmm. oh, I see a pattern. <laughs> With the two examples we did on the board, I told you it's going to be the same thing every time. Okay. The hardest part is writing yeah. this the no, function. The hardest part is drawing the picture. <laughs> just wait, 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 wait! Yeah. Wait, I just thought of something. What? Uh -oh. yeah. The book doesn't give you pictures. What? What? You said yes. No, no, no. <laughs> on, on my website, did I give you a link to the pictures? Is there a link to pictures? What? Okay, look on the left side of the website. What website? What website? Do I have to bring up the website? No, we're joking, we're joking. What is it called? It's called like Diagrams for Section 5.4. Wow, this is hilarious. No more. Okay, I only did it for AB. I only did it for AB. You're BC. You are like, what do you call this? The creme de la creme. No. Or are you bottom of the barrel? Bottom. Bottom. Yes. Bottom. 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 13. Okay, I will do this one because, yeah. Did you guys draw a picture? Yes. Okay, you have a poster, and in the poster, you're going to have like print material here. You're gonna, this is the print material. And then it says you have four inch margins at the top and the bottom, so four inches on the top and the bottom, and two inches on the sides like this. What overall dimensions will minimize the amount of paper that you're going to use? And then, what is the area of this print area here? What does it say? 50 square inches right there. Now, you have two choices. No, I actually got four choices. Do you want to label the outer part x and y, or do you want to label this x and that y? The outer part. 
outer part. No, think ahead. Can you think ahead to the next step? Inner. 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 Very good. Like if I were doing it, I would label this x and this y. Now, what are we trying to minimize in this problem? Paper. The amount of paper that you're going to use. Now, look at this picture. What is the amount? What is the area of the amount of paper that you're using? If this is x, and then you got two and two, what is this? Thank you. And then what is this? Y plus a. So what is the area of the amount of paper that you're going to use? X plus four times y plus eight. Now, of course, if you label this x and that y then you have a different function, but you're going to get the same answer at the end. It doesn't matter, as long as you do correct mathematics. Now, we need another equation. Well, the area of this region has to be 50, so... X, Y equals 50. That's right. Y equal 50 over X. Plug it in there, take the derivative, and make the number line. Do you want me to do it for you? No. Okay, some people are saying yes, look. So if you plug 50 over X in there, what do you want to use, product rule or multiply it out? Multiply it out. Okay, multiply it out, so you got 50 plus 8x plus 200 over x plus 32. Is that foil? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just for that, Lama Chani, take the derivative. Okay, I got the first one, zero. <coughs> <laughs> No, no, minus. Did you learn from Ishihara? Minus 200 over x squared. Thank you. Factor out, I mean, make a least common denominator. So you got 8x squared minus 200. Does 8 go into 200? Yes. Yep. Factor out the 8. x squared minus? 25. 8 quarters, right? Makes $2. Oh. <coughs> so plus or minus 5 and 0. Number line time, zero, <laughs> plus or minus five, and then it's gonna be plus, minus, minus, plus, but we don't care about that one right there, right? So, area increasing, area decreasing, the max, wait, 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 wait. The max, area decreasing, area increasing, the min x min is equal to five. So if you want to use the least amount of paper, you would make x five. But then you gotta answer the question now. You, I didn't answer the question, you gotta answer the Over our dimension. I'm not gonna even look at what the question is. I'm just showing you how to do the problem. Number 18, this is beginning to bore me. These are like the same problems over and over. Okay, we still have 20. <laughs> 18, oh, do I really have to draw this picture? No. I do. It drew it for us. Yeah. How many of you have, even have your books? Sure. I don't want to even know. I've had the page. <laughs> so do you guys understand what's going to happen in this problem? You're going to fold like this, like that. <coughs> and then can you see that it makes a box? Yeah. Except I did it wrong. It's over here. You fold it and you have a fully enclosed box. <coughs> And I'm not going to write down, okay, I'm going to, this is 10 inches, x. gosh, I can't even read this thing, this is x, this is x, this is x, this is x, except for the lock, like the, this is x, this is x, this is x, this is x, and then the whole thing is 15. A piece of cardboard measures 10 by 15, so 15 inches is like this. Two equal squares are removed from the corners of a 10-inch side shown in the figure. Two equal rectangles are removed from this side so that the tabs can be folded to form a box with a lid. Turn the page. Write a formula. Okay, dot. Now look at this picture. When you're done, you're going to get a rectangular box. What, what, are, what, what is the formula for the volume of a box? Aren't you going to fold this part here too? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so this, so this thing here is the base of the box. What's the area of that shaded region there? What is this? 10 minus, 10 minus 2x. What is this? Can you guys do that? Or do we need to use the box method? Box. 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 
see, that's a box, that's a box. So 2x plus 2 box got to equal 15. x plus box equal 15 halves. Box equals 15 halves minus x. <laughs> Did I really have to do that? OK, so 15 halves minus x. And then what's the height of the box going to be? X. x. Take the derivative and make the number line. So this one, you, you, you guys are going to do that one. Because it's a polynomial. The simplest function that you can get is a polynomial, and that's a polynomial. Wait, wait, wait. I, I'm surprised you guys didn't ask um, the very first problem. I thought the very first problem was one of the harder ones. Yeah. In terms of taking the derivative and making the number line. Oh, yeah. OK, and then number 20, and we're done for today. We're done for today. OK, this is the same problem we did at PCH last year, and I told you we're going to use calculus to solve this problem. Oh, jeez. Jane, Jane is two miles offshore. So here's Jane. Here's the shore. She's two miles offshore. Does this sound familiar? Yeah. Yeah. And she wants to get to a village, except last year it was a snack bar. Yeah. Yeah. Six miles down. Yeah, so last year it was a lifeguard with a snack bar. This year it's Jane with a village, and we still can't remember how we did the problem. She can roll two miles an hour, except last year it was swim. And she can walk five miles per hour. Where should she land her boat to reach the village in the least amount of time? So here's the village over here. Should she just aim straight for the village like that? No. no, because she can walk two and a half times faster than she can roll. So, probably you're going to land somewhere over here, we'll call that X, and then you go walk the rest of the way. What are we trying to minimize in this problem? Distance. Time, no, time. <laughs> well, if it was distance, then that would be it, right? The shortest distance between two points is a straight line. We're trying to minimize time here. Okay, so remembering that rate times time equals distance, time is equal to distance over rate, correct? Oh. So would you distance. agree this is the distance that she rolls? Yeah. And what is that distance using the Pythagorean theorem? Square root of? Four. X squared plus four. This is the distance that she walks, which is? Six minus Because it's picture six minus X. <laughs> okay, so what is the time that she spends rolling? <coughs> That distance that. divided by rate. Distance divided by rate. What is her rolling rate if you read the problem? Six. Two. Two. <laughs> Two. <laughs> this is the distance that she walks. <laughs> what is her walking time? Five. Distance over rate. <laughs> this is the time she spends rowing. This is the time she spends walking. Therefore, what is the total amount of time you add them together? You guys really don't remember this from PCH. No, we never did this. We did this. Did. Did. Just did we do it? Yes. You were in my class, Howard. Yeah. I don't remember. Yeah, but I told you, last year it was a lifeguard and a snack bar. I seriously don't remember. I know, I know. Okay, take the derivative and make a number line. Now, no calculator. There's no calculator in this problem. Take the derivative. I'm looking at this side. Tran, the derivative, go. Um, 1 over 2x squared plus 4. Or like times 2. What? 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 <laughs> two. Okay, <laughs> negative 1. Times 2. Ooh, so like kind of like <laughs> this is like x squared plus 4 to the 1 half. Isn't that 1 over 2 x? Right? Okay, and then? Times half. Times? 1 half. <laughs> oh. But then what about oh, yeah, the derivative of the, of the box? box? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is BC, people. <laughs> Only AB forget the derivative of a box. Continue. No. Minus 1. <laughs> Everybody say so see. What did you do? Quotient row? Everybody knows the derivative this is one negative one fifth. You split it up, lift and separate. Isn't this some of you going, what? 
He can do the quotient rule fast, huh? No, this is the same thing as 6 fifths minus 1 fifth x. Lift and separate. The derivative is negative 1 fifth. Okay, now we need to make a least common denominator, but we need to simplify. So equal up here. So how do you simplify this? x over 2 root x squared plus 4 minus 1 fifth. Did I do that correctly? Okay, now let's make a least common denominator, which is? What's the least common denominator here? 10 root x squared plus 4. What goes on the top? 5x minus, minus 2 root x squared plus 4. We are ready for the number line because you can't factor that anymore. Okay, what makes the bottom zero? Nothing. Nothing. Okay, what makes the top zero? Let me call on somebody. Oga. <coughs> Read it off your paper. Oh. Abe, substitution? Uno. Hmm? Does that mean one? Oh, wait. No, one doesn't make it zero. Oh, wait, what makes the top zero? Hui. Uh, okay, let's just, uh, um, Wong? Let's just X out the entire row right here. Uh, four over root 21. Very good! What? what? Yeah, Wong! <laughs> 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 Excellent. Excellent, Wong. That's what I want. <coughs> read it off your paper. <laughs> you read it off your paper! <laughs> now, some of you are going, where the heck did he get that? Well, what would make this zero? When this, you go off to the side, what is this equal to zero? When 5x is equal to 2 root x squared plus 4, correct? Yeah. Square both sides. 25x squared is equal to 4 times x squared plus 4. 25x squared is equal to 4x squared plus 16. 21x squared is equal to 16. x squared is equal to 16 over 21. x equals plus or minus 4 over root 21. And that's how you get it. You go to the side and figure it out. Some of you are doing it in your head. <laughs> <laughs> Is that even close? I, thought, I don't know, because I was Four, like five, oh. right? I forgot there's a root there. I forgot there's a root there. Yeah, I forgot there's a root there. Then it would make sense. Yeah, right? you know, but then even, it's, it's okay. even without the root, yeah. you're going to get five minus ten. ten. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Pretty close. Oh, yeah, that's close enough. Pretty close. That's, so actually, there's supposed to be a plus or minus root four over 21, but x cannot be negative, right? Oh, wow. Backwards. Okay, test the number line wow. for me. Okay, let, I want to see how clever you guys are. Moriguchi, is it minus plus or plus minus or plus plus or minus minus? One out of four tens. Um, minus plus. Excellent. How did you get that so quickly? Plugged in zero. Yeah. And then what, so what's a number bigger than 4 over root 21? Thousand. I was thinking 1. Who <laughs> knows? Oh, <no. laughs> <laughs> okay, but I think Hanuman has the easiest way of doing it. Hanuman, explain. Try to find the minimum Very zero good. Previous. See? This is, that's the, called the devious way. <laughs> We're looking for a minimum, so it has to go down, then out. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's not cheating. That's no. That's play, It's called playing the game, Yoshida. Wait. So what? There's always going to be an. You just think about it. On the AP exam, when you're writing things, they don't know what came first, the chicken or the egg, right? You know what I'm talking about? Wait, what was it? Okay, you guys saw so Tx min is equal to 4 over root 21. I will, I will let you answer the question. This is a, I'll tell you, I'll give you a hint. Last year, I think this problem was on the test. So pretty much, of, of all the problems we're going to do, we're going to pick three. Three of the bestest ones. Because you're going to have three of these and then three of what we're studying next. Yeah. Wait, Ten zero? points each. <laughs> for, I'll give you 43 points on this test. Yes. But then if you keep on getting minus 10, minus 10, minus 10, that's not going to be good. 
Yoshida? If you're, isn't that the same thing as the parabola? Uh, rectangle, you know, has a maximum, same thing as this, you know, has a minimum, so you can just cheat. Yeah, but you have to cheat. Yeah, yes, you can. Yes. No, I don't want to call it say it che cheat, cheating. Precisely, you can be resourceful. Yeah, but you still have to show this number line. You know what I'm talking about? You guys understand? In order for it to, it to be a min, you gotta go downhill and then uphill. So whatever. I hope that's not on the video. Somebody edit that out. <laughs> Are we done? That was the last problem. Okay, now tonight's homework is the same problems except they get tougher. So both for those of you who like struggled on these easy ones. Yeah, and then you know what? You're going to be doing your homework tonight. You're going to be going, hey, we did this last year. In fact, one of them, do you guys remember I did? Oh, gosh. I've been 22 from last year. Yeah. Okay, you, know, you want me to do one of your homework problems for you? Yeah. No. 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 Oh, no. Well, I thought we purged everything from last year. Who said? You said. That, no. That's from algebra two honors. You would be purged. We don't purge. Wait, that's why we couldn't do the shortcut because we purged it. What shortcut? No. You know what? You guys need to work on this. Okay. Next order of business. I'm going to give you a lecture on the next section, five point six. So this is one application of derivatives. This is called optimization. You have a work problem. Write a function. Find either the maximum or minimum. Okay. It's, this, it's repetitive. The hardest part is writing the function. Now the other application that you're gonna be tested on is called, did anybody read ahead? Course doing. 5.6, what's the title of section 5.6? Course zero. I don't know rates. In fact, Holy I'm just gonna, I'm, so in other words, okay, let me just, let, I'll do one problem and then that, that'll be good enough, I think. Okay, let's say you have a rectangle. The length is increasing at the rate of uh, delta all over three <laughs> inches per second. So the length L is increasing at a rate of what did I just say? Three inches per second. So can you imagine that? It's going like this. And the length. The width is decreasing. Oh. At two inches per second. What am I doing? I don't know why I'm putting square. Because I'm thinking ahead. At the exact moment, at the moment when the length is four inches and the width is three inches, compute or find, we're going to find three things. A, how fast the diagonal is changing. Whole. So in other words, okay, we have a rectangle. The length is getting bigger at three inches per second like this. And the width is getting smaller at the rate of two inches per second. So like, let's say this is what the picture looks like now. One second from now, what is it gonna look like? It's gonna look like that then, right? The length is getting bigger at three inches per second. The width is getting smaller at the rate of two inches per second. So one second later, is it gonna look like this? Yeah. Yeah, so this rectangle is changing. So, Metamorphosis. as it changes, <laughs> how fast is this diagonal changing? So that's what related rates is. If this changes and this changes, how does something else change? That's why we call it related rates, because they're all related together. This is, not, this is not difficult. In fact, most students like this better than optimization for some reason. So, the first thing you do is when you label a picture, do not ever do this. Because this is, this is the AB mistake right here. They go, oh, the length is 4 and the width is 3. <laughs> we call that a fatal error. Early. That would be a fatal error. 
any any length or quantity that's changing, you have to label with a variable. So since this is changing, you label it with a variable L for length, and this is changing, you label it with a variable W for width. And what do you want to use for diagonal? B? Or you want to just do another random letter? C? H, H. T. H. H. That don't make sense. Square root of L squared plus W squared. D. D. Okay, let's just use D for diagonal then. Okay, here's the first step. The first step in a problem, it's three steps. You just got to do the three steps and it works every time. Write an equation that relates the variables. That's the first one. Now look at this picture. What equation can I write that Pythagorean relates these three variables together? Pythagorean theorem. So d squared is equal to L squared plus W squared. Everybody see that? Sometimes it's pretty obvious what the equation is. Sometimes it's not and you got to use similar triangles. No. Ball bears. Yes. <laughs> yes. Ball bears. In fact, you know what? I'm gonna I'll do another problem after this just to show you the similar thing. Second step, take the derivative of this equation with respect to time. Not with respect to D, L, or W, with respect to time. So I'll do so what we're gonna do basically is do implicit differentiation with respect to time. So here we go. I'll do the first one. 2D times the derivative of that, think of each variable as box, box squared, two box times the derivative of box, d, 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 because you're taking the derivative with respect to time, which is t. No, you cannot write d prime. However, okay, I'll explain something later, let's just keep going. Second term, box squared, two box times the derivative of box, what's the derivative of l with respect to time? D, l, d, l, d. Okay, so this term, box squared, two box ugh, times the derivative of box with respect to time dw dt. There you go, that's the second step. And then finally, the third step is plug in the information and solve for the variable that you want. So, we're trying to find how fast the diagonal is changing. Which, which one of these represents that? D, 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 T, how fast it's changing. We want the derivative of the diagonal with respect to time. So in order to compute D, 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 T, we have to plug in numbers for all these other variables. By the way, can I just divide everything by two? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so let's do this. At the moment in question, see, at the moment when the length is four and the width is three, do we know what the length of the diagonal is? Yeah. When this is four and this is three, what is the length of the diagonal? Mm. Dumb, five. So that's what you plug in here. So 5 d d d t is equal to, now what do I plug in for L hill here? 4. At the moment in question, what is the length? 4. 4. What is d l d t? How is the length changing with respect to time? It's increasing at the rate of 3 inches per second. So 3. At the moment in question, what is W? 3. And what is dw dt? Minus negative. negative 2. How come negative? Because it's decreasing. If something is decreasing, its derivative must be negative, right? Yes. Now, that's a common mistake. I'm telling you right now, this minus sign is going to cost you three or four points. Now. Six, that's a, that makes a big difference in your final answer. And then now, all you have to do is crunch numbers. dd dt is equal to 12 minus 6 over 5, which is equal to 6 fifths. And then the only time you ever have to give units on the AP exam is when you're doing related rates. What are the units? How fast is the diagonal changing? Inches per second. Now, if, for those of you who are not good at units, you know what you do? You just look at this. You're taking the derivative of the diagonal over time. So how is the diagonal measured? If you were to measure this diagonal, what would you use? Meters. Inches, no, inches. <laughs> and what is your unit of time in this problem? Look. So it's inches per second. So just look at this, diagonal over time. That tells you what your units are like. So at the moment in question, the, error, the, the length of the diagonal is actually getting bigger at that rate because it's positive, that's why, right? Now you might be thinking, oh, this is so easy. Okay, let's kick it up a notch. How fast is the area changing? Area changing. 
Okay, what's the first step? <coughs> Write an equation that relates the variables. Now, we're trying to find how fast is the area of this rectangle changing. Well, what equation can I write for the area? Area, area equals length times width, right? Second step, what's the second step? Take the derivative with respect to time. Now, for those of you who don't like to write d something over dt, there is another notation you can use, and you know what that is? A dot. No. That's no. Newton's no. notation. That's Newton's dot notation. Whenever you put a dot over it, that means you're taking the derivative with respect to time. So this means d a d t. So you can either write d a d t or a dot. You cannot write a prime though. That's that's something else. <coughs> okay, you guys understand? Put it on the legend. Okay, now look over here. I see a product. Should I just make up my own or use the get a minus ten? Yeah. Okay. Or should I use the product rule? I use the darn good school. I think you use the product rule. <laughs> derivative of the first, leave the second one alone. Leave the first one alone, derivative of the second. So, how fast is the area changing? We're trying to find the ADT. So, in order to compute the ADT, all you have to do is plug in numbers for these things. But they're all given! What do I plug in for L dot? 3. W. Three. L. Four. W dot. So what does that come out to? Nine minus eight is one. And what are the units? D A D T. Area over time. How is area measured in this problem? Square. Square. square inches over second. So square inches per second. This is not exciting. Okay, and then we save the best for last. C. Uh, which angle do you want to do? This one or that one? Let's do the 90. This one. Good. How fast is theta changing? Wait. How fast is theta changing? Okay, now look. Just, just, let's just use common sense. If L is getting bigger and W is getting smaller, is theta getting bigger or getting smaller? <coughs> it's getting smaller. So when you, when you compute the data dt, see this kind of thing you think in your head, it should come out negative then, right? Because yeah. it's getting smaller. So if you don't get a negative number as your answer, you're doing something wrong. Okay, first step. Write an equation that relates the variables. Now, there's 12 equations you can write here. You can write cosine theta equals? No, you got to use the variables. L over D, you can go sine theta equal W over D. You can go tan theta equal W over L. You can go cotan theta equal L over W. There's too many choices. Or you can go theta equal cosine inverse L over D. Theta equal tan inverse W over L. Now think ahead, because you're going to have to take the derivative of the equation now. Which one do you think is the best one? Do you want to do like the cosine theta equal something, or do you want to go theta equal cosine inverse? Oh, cosine inverse. Think about it, think about it. Look ahead at the next step and think about what you're trying to find. You're trying to find the theta dt. So if you did this, okay, let's say some of you know, Mr. Park, I'm going to do sine theta equal W over D. Now think about it. If you take the, uh, there's nothing wrong with that, except when you take the derivative, what's the derivative of sine box? Cosine box times the derivative of box equals, and then I have a quotient, I mean, use the quotient rule. Okay, let's do it. Low D high minus high D low all over denominated squared. We go. What are we trying to find by? What are we trying to find? E theta dt. E dt. So that means you have to plug in for everything there. Which is not very difficult. However, what if you went like theta equal tan inverse, let me look at the picture, w over l. Why would that be better? Be exactly, because when you take the derivative, you get theta dot right off the bat. That's what you're trying to find. You know what I'm talking about? It doesn't matter. Use any one of those whole <laughs> equations, whatever you feel comfortable with. <coughs> now, what is the derivative of tan inverse box? Who's got this one? Lee. 
Add inverse box. I didn't put in parentheses. One over one plus <coughs> dummy squared over L squared. Ooh, trying to impress me. Keep times, going. Times the, the, um, do you have to do quotient rule? That's optional. You tell me. Okay, this is what you gotta ask yourself. Is this a quotient? Right? Your grade is a product of your actual grade times and point times point one. Oh. Oh. Whoa. Okay, B. <laughs> you got math, bird. Let me continue. You can just say W dot. That's right. And all you have to do now is plug in. So the last step, the third step, is just plug in the numbers. So theta dot is equal to 1 over 1 plus. OK, what do I plug in for w and l? What is it? What is it? What are we talking about here? 3 and 4. Let, can we do this in hand? What is 3 over 4 squared? 9 over 16. Okay. Times, what is l? We just did. <laughs> 4. What is w dot? Just look over there. 2. No, it's <laughs> negative 2. That's three points flushed down the drain right there. <coughs> Minus W. Three. Oh, so Mr. Park, if I if every single problem I put two for W, that's minus nine out of ten or anything. Oh yes. 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 And you deserve it. Anyway. L dot. L dot. L dot. Two. Three. 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 Gosh, look at we just did it over here. <laughs> All over L squared. 16. Okay, now, can you simplify that? Now, on the AP, I'll tell you right now, AP exam, this is full credit. That's, you know, yeah, but on my exam, that's not full credit. But once you get to this stage here, the most you can get off is minus 1. Unless you get your units wrong, then you can get minus 3. So how do you want to do this? What do you want to do? Do you want to take this 16 and distribute it over there? Because it's in the No, no. why not? You can just combine sure. one in No, no. Look. If you take the thing, look, the 16 plus 9, 25. If you distribute the 16 in the denominator. OK, you can do whatever you want. I just want to see the final result. And in the numerator, you get 1 times this. What is this? Negative 8 minus 9. Negative 17. Negative 17. Hey, see, that's really <coughs> not negative. And what are the units, Lama Chani, daydreaming back there? Come on, you know if you daydream, I'm going to call on you. Sure. Well, next time, Mr. Parker, can pretend I'm daydreaming. So you can call on you. Um, what are the units, Lama Chani? Degree. D, D. OK, you can tell that no. D theta dt, angle over time. How are angles measured? Angles measured? Degrees over <laughs> Radian, thank you. Angles are always measured in radians, unless it's radians per second or minute. What have we got here? In seconds, radians per second. Angles are always measured in radians, not degrees. However, on, now we're going to spend two nights on this homework. There's one problem that gives you the thing in degrees per second, I think. You have to convert that into radians per second. No. Okay, don't do just give it a minute. Ah, that is Okay, now does everybody, look, again, it's so repetitive. You write the equation, you take the derivative with respect to time, you plug in the numbers. Every single problem is like that. Write the equation, take the derivative, plug in the numbers. Write the equation, take the derivative, plug in the numbers. It's repetitive, just like the last one. Write the equation, take the derivative, make a number line. It's like you're doing the same thing, except it's different every time. Making Okay, wait, you know what? No, I'm not. No, I'm not gonna. 